I'm just going to offer a few quick reflections on what we've heard today and give you a bit of an overview of the newly launched GSMA Disaster Response Program, uh, some of our key initiatives, and then direct you to our website to find more detailed information. So as, as many of you have been in the front seat for witnessing, we've seen unprecedented global upheaval over the past few years. The political, social, and environmental landscape has altered permanently. In 2010, as many of you know, 42 million were displaced through a combination of drought, climactic change, and mega disasters. Dadaab turns 20 this year, and the issues of rapid population growth, urbanization, and food insecurity will continue to grow. People are now as likely to move into places of vulnerability as from them, and the very poorest are at most risk. This is, in the, this is the environment in which we work. Yet daunting as these numbers are, mobile access is growing even more quickly. In the developing world, there are 18 new connections being made each second. Global connections have broken through the six billion mark, and soon there will be more connections on Earth than there are people. The new uses to which we put mobile will become vitally important. Mobile is the first tool that affected populations used to connect with their families, response agencies, and governments. Mobile is already used to send remittances, support aid coordination, including two-way communications, and now we can even predict refugee and IDP, IDP movements through mobile. Despite the fear that often accompanies the adoption and integration of new technologies, mobile's role as a keystone of emergency response is being hardwired into the system because end users themselves are familiar with using this technology already. Its importance will continue to grow. However, a global footprint for its proper usage has not yet been built. The GSMA Disaster Response Program begins its work against this backdrop. Operators are regularly asked for free SIM cards or SMS to support humanitarian response, but operators have much more to offer than just their networks. The GSMA, as the global trade association of the mobile industry with over 800 members, is perfectly positioned to convene and coordinate mobile operators in order to leverage their reach and capacity for social impact. We will use our unique position to lead the mobile industry in improving network preparedness and restoration, as well as providing joined up support for humanitarian responders and disaster affected populations. And these populations are the key here. They're already transforming disaster response at the community and humanitarian policy making levels, simply through their ability to access, generate, and share information. They're using technology in new and unprecedented ways. Necessity is the mother of invention, and they are inventing their own solutions. We should take note of these. The future of disaster response strategies is already being built, and it's not happening in London, Washington, or Geneva. However, despite this grassroots innovation, there remains a vital need for us to build a framework for better preparedness and cooperation between operators, their humanitarian counterparts, and affected communities. Free bulk SMS and short codes for every agency that wishes to open two-way communication channels is not the silver bullet for beneficiary communication. And unless the challenges of coordination is addressed, these systems will do little for improving accountability, empowerment, or information provision for those who most need it. While every humanitarian crisis is different, universal to all of them is the obligation of the humanitarian and mobile industries to engage earlier, to improve preparedness, and to understand their capabilities and roles ahead of a crisis. This is what the GSMA Disaster Response Program will be working towards achieving. When we discuss communications with disaster-affected populations, we must also consider communication between affected populations. This is vital. We must ensure that when strategies are designed, they foster the participation of those they wish to impact. We have to make a commitment to convoke the voices of affected populations in ways that place them at the very center of solution design. That's why the Disaster Response Program is pushing this year for an industry-wide agreement on the provision of direct-to-consumer communication access in the immediate aftermath of a disaster. By doing this, we allow affected citizens to reconnect with their loved ones, request help, and access the life-saving information that they need. Like radio and television before it, mobile has helped break down the barriers of citizenship, race, and geography, barriers that once divided our lives into those we had accountability to and those who were beyond us. At the same time, mobile renders us witness to the suffering of others in unprecedented ways. Real-time blogging, user-generated video, and instant communications out of disaster zones are now simply a matter of fact. Mobile's potential for positive impact in these situations is practically limitless. The GSMA believes that communication and information are as critical as food, water, and medical aid. 
It believes that the disaster response program represents a significant opportunity to strengthen existing partnerships and build new bridges between mobile operators and the humanitarian community that will support impactful, coordinated response. The program was born of the simple belief that when you restore the mobile network, you rebuild the human network. And we look forward to working with all of you to achieve this. I'd like to say a huge thanks to the Seed Network for inviting us to sponsor this event and to Google for hosting us. And I'd like to direct you to the GSMA Development Fund website to watch an informational video on some of our key activities. And please find me during the cocktails if you have any questions or want more information.